I'm Rob Larson. I'm the CIO for CRMLS, and uh, I also chair the Research Data Dictionary Workgroup. The real business perspective of what the dictionary does for you is um, it solves sort of two aspects. Um, one is, is from a standpoint of the level of effort, the level of cost for vendors to provide products to our industry. Um, we've got say 1.2 million customers out there for them. But if you take the average of per MLS, and MLSs tend to have unique data sets, you only get about 2,000 customers out of one initiative. And then you've got to go back and put in potentially hundreds of hours to adopt the next 2,000. So the margin becomes thinner and thinner for our industry. And as such, uh, it's harder to attract new developers in the space. And the other aspect of it is understanding. Um, I've experienced situations where you have the same word in two different systems, yet they're understood two different ways. And by mitigating the risk that's involved with that, um, you really make the vendor community a little bit more confident to come and bring products to us. The scope of the data dictionary is um, really founded in what you would find in common MLSs. Uh, so uh, your listings, your property type notions, those features and so on that revolve around it. Uh, things around listings like the price and, and other information that you would have. Um, roster was one of our um, uh, first uh, resources as we call them. Uh, and then you also have other aspects like open house. Um, but as the dictionary has grown, we've been branching out into other aspects of real estate related information. So one of our most recent is showing, for example. So now we have a data structure defining if you're going to share an appointment for a showing, this is, this is the shape of it. This is how you shall share it. One of the common misconceptions is, is that an MLS will take a look at the dictionary and say it, it's too much here or too little there. And an important notion of the data dictionary is, is that it's there to unify the commonality between MLSs. Uh, as an MLS, I extend beyond what the dictionary has. There's also fields in the dictionary that I just don't have that type of information and I'm not required to have that info. Certification is about the things that I have and the dictionary have being done the same way. In addition to showings, in our current version is 1.6, um, the additions that came in along those lines, I think one of the important ones to our industry um, falls under the um, uh, category of uh, uh, consumer portals. Um, there is information that is being generated in those portals by the real estate agent and by their client. Uh, they discuss listings, uh, they flag favorites, and that was another aspect that was brought into the dictionary with 1.6. We were able to get industry experts to come forward. Um, so in addition to uh, receiving the feedback from the different MLSs and other vendors that might have compliance oriented um, uh, fields, we brought in industry expert who showed how it's really defined by the government um, and the different categories and so we were able to not only uh, support what the MLSs have today but guide them into better terminology and some actual guidelines within our definitions. The types of organizations that we need at RISO um, in any of our initiatives really I think is best wrapped up in one word, diversity. Um, you know, we have software vendors, we have actual MLS companies, um, we have some associations, um, and better uh, and better has been the participation from the practitioners over the years. Uh, we have more brokers here today and more focus on the brokerage community today than we've had in the past, and I think that's really important to get the perspective of the people who are utilizing these things. And one of the notions of us taking the dictionary and creating a wiki was to put it out there 
Yes, it's, it's nice access and you can search terms, but the idea of a wiki is to get participation and discussion around the definitions and the fields that we have in the dictionary. So at ddwiki.reso.org, you can go in no matter what business segment you're in and participate in that definition. You can put in your own definitions, you can ask questions, that goes back into the review process we have and then ultimately results in an update to the definition of whatever field or pick list item you're looking at. The Data Dictionary work group is always looking for fresh blood. Um, we have got some fantastic participants who really invest their time, um, but less about uh, a time investment, uh, an investment of perspective. Um, we're always welcome to have people come into the group to bring in their perspective. I think it's key to the success of what we're attempting to do is to have people from all walks of our industry coming in and, and putting their thoughts forward and, and representing what they believe is the right way to do things. And what's coming next for the dictionary is, is our version 1.7. Uh, we, do, uh, we do one of these subversions point uh, every year as we've been growing the dictionary. Uh, the most prominent aspect of this is, is what we call our platinum enumeration work. And what that means is, is um, we took the dictionary and we broke it up into five categories and we started with what we call core, basic, and then we went through metals, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. Platinum is the last group that we're going out and creating these pick list items for every field. And by completing this platinum work, um, our original goal and our original resources is finally being completed. So we're actually hitting a, a, a really major milestone uh, for, for the Reso Dictionary. So this platinum enumeration work is in progress right now. Um, we've had really good participation, but if someone hasn't participated yet, it's not too late. Get in and you can take a look at what we have going on there. We have uh, several other categories that we're going after with the uh, 1.7 version of the dictionary. Um, I think one of the most interesting ones to me personally is, is that uh, we're going to go out and evaluate a single field that we have in the dictionary today called Days on Market or DOM. And it is one of the most eclectic business rule oriented um, fields uh, that I think we have in the MLS today. Uh, from one MLS to another, there's all sorts of nuances. So um, I am going to try to create categorizations of days on market so we can have a better understanding, again, of the 95% use case so that we can have some terminology that supports different kinds of DOMs and maybe we can have more understanding and more unification down the road with DOM.